Hello and uh, welcome to this lecture. So, in the previous lecture, we saw one uh, very important and uh, interesting method for designing uh, estimators. Uh, that was the method of moments, where uh, you know you looked at the sample moments, evaluated the sample moments. Uh, I mean, sorry, evaluated the distribution moments as a function of parameters, and then equated that function of the parameters to the sample moments and uh, did a solving, you know, expressed the parameters in terms of the moments and uh, finally substituted them back and got your estimates. It seemed like a, a simple procedure, it was a simple procedure in most cases. It is quite useful, you know, quite often you may not get a handle on the actual distribution itself, you may not know the distribution and you have to guess at it and then, uh, you know, uh, why, why guess a distribution when you do not know, so just use the moments. Uh, the moments uh, can be quite reliably estimated you know, from the samples using the sample moments and uh, try and match the moments as much as possible. So, as a principle, uh, trying to get moments to match between your estimate and uh, what you, uh, what the distribution actually gives you is a very good uh, principle for designing estimators, okay. So, in this lecture, we are going to jump into another very, very important and interesting principle called maximum likelihood. So, in theory, the way we will develop it is to assume a distribution. When you know the distribution very well, uh, maybe you can do uh, a little bit better, you know. I mean, you can, you can come up with some uh, interesting strategies using the distribution uh, explicitly, not just the moments, right. So, maximum likelihood is a method like that. It is a very popular method. A lot of people uh, swear by it. They, use, they think maximum likelihood is the only method to use, etc., etc. Uh, but it is a good, very good method, it is founded on good theoretical ideas and it is also easy to derive sometimes and also to implement, it is not too, too difficult sometimes when you know the distribution, okay. So, let us get started uh, looking at maximum likelihood. Uh, the first definition is this word likelihood, okay. What is likelihood? Before you go about maximizing the likelihood, you need to know what the likelihood is. So, in this case, we will be talking about the likelihood of the IID samples that we observed. Okay, so, we are observing n IID samples, this has been our picture throughout. Uh, there are parameters that are unknown in the distribution of these uh, samples, uh, theta 1, theta 2, etc. And the PDF or PMF, okay, so this fx of x uh, represents either the PDF or the PMF. If you have the continuous case, it is going to be the PDF, the density function. If you have a discrete case, it is going to be the PMF, which is the mass function, okay. Keep the distinction in your mind. I will just say distribution f x of x like, like that, I will say that you can substitute it suitably, okay. So, we will, uh, we know that the PDF or the PMF depends on these parameters theta 1, theta 2, etc. To, so, to bring that into the notation, instead of just writing f x of x, I will write f x of x semicolon theta 1 comma theta 2, etc. Okay, so, so, that notation brings out the fact that distribution depends on the, you know, the variable x and the value of the distribution at that point x actually depends on the parameters uh, theta 1, theta 2 in this fashion. Okay, so, here is an example for you. If you think of the normal uh, mu sigma square distribution, uh, the PDF evaluated at x uh, with parameter mu and sigma is this function, right, 1 by root 2 pi sigma e power minus x minus mu all square by 2 sigma square. So, you have mu appearing in the PDF expression, sigma appearing in the PDF expression, x also appears in the PDF expression. So, I can write this function as f x of x semicolon mu comma sigma, just to bring out that mu and sigma plays a role uh, in that function, okay. Uh, so, once you do that, you can write down something called the likelihood of a particular sampling instance. So, your samples are usually random variables. In a particular instance, those random variables take some actual values. What are those actual values? I will denote them small x1, small x2 till small xn. The likelihood of that, of that actual sampling will, I will denote it capital L, okay, L of x1 to xn. So, sometimes the arguments will be dropped. I will just say capital L. It is simply the product of the distribution function. It could be PDF for the continuous case or PMF for the discrete case, it is simply the product of the distribution function, uh, let us say the density function evaluated at each of the samples, okay. So, you see here the product goes from i equals 1 to n and then I take the density function, let us say, and evaluate it at x i, okay. So, the parameters, remember the parameters are all always there for every evaluation, but this x i will keep changing. In the first time it will be x 1, the next time it will be x 2 like that, okay. So, that is the likelihood 
uh, function. Okay, so so you can see this likelihood sort of represents the probability of observing the particular sample. Right, so remember the samples are independent, so their probabilities can be multiplied. Okay. So, you evaluate the probability, let us say if it is PMF, then you evaluate the probability that that particular xi occurred, it is a probability that x1 equals x, a small x1, right. So, that is the PMF evaluated at xi. So, even the density sort of represents, you know, how likely it is that uh, you got the, uh, that particular value. So, 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 this likelihood is a good word for this expression, right. It, it's, it's, it represents some, in some sense, uh, how likely I was to observe this particular sample. But remember, remember what is very important, given the samples, the likelihood is a function of the unknown parameters of the distribution, okay. So, say that to yourself again, it is a very, very important idea that is sort of hidden in this expression. The likelihood for a particular sampling instance, I have put in the value of x1, x2, xn, but still the theta1 and theta2 remain unknown, right. So, the likelihood is actually a function of theta 1, theta 2. So, I am not showing that here on the left hand side. I simply say x 1 to x n, but the assumption is this theta 1, theta 2 is also uh, built into this, okay. So, this is a function of theta 1, theta 2, etc. So, very, very important uh, thing observation to have, okay. So, here is a example, okay. So, let us begin with the Bernoulli p samples. Those are the samples given to you 100101 If you want to evaluate the likelihood, it is going to be the PMF of the Bernoulli distribution. What is it? What is the PMF here? So, fx of uh, x equals p if x equals 1 and 1 minus p if x equals 0, right. So, the first sample you observe is 1. So, the PMF is p. Okay. The second sample is 1 minus p, the third sample is 1 minus p, the fourth sample is p, the fifth sample is 1 minus p, then you have a sequence of p's, right, and then you have 1 minus p, you have 1 minus p. Okay. All of these are multiplied together, right. So, the PMF evaluated at the first sample, second sample, third sample, so on. So, it is almost like probability that the first sample equals 1, that is p probability that the second sample equals 0, that is 1 minus p like that. You multiply all of these things, you get the probability of the entire sample, okay. So, in the discrete case, clearly this is the probability of x1 equals 1, x2 equals 0, so on till x10 equals 0, right. So, this exact probability, these are all independent, right. So, you can multiply them out, you get this. So, now after you multiply them out, what will you get? Here in this case, you get p power 5 and 1 minus p power 5. What is this first 5? This, if you think about it, is the number of 1s in the sample. What is this 5? Okay, in this case, both happen to be equal, but this is actually the number of zeros in the sample. Okay, do you see that? So, if tomorrow some other sampling you observe for the same Bernoulli p distribution, the likelihood will also be always be p raised to the power of number of 1s in the samples that you saw and 1 minus p multiplied by 1 minus p raised to the power of number of zeros that you saw in the samples. Remember, number of 1s in the samples plus the number of zeros in the samples is actually equal to the total number of samples. So, it is enough if you count the number of 1s. What is the number of zeros? It is n minus the number of 1s, okay. So, that is also easy enough for you to see n minus number of 1s, okay. So, that is uh, uh, just Bernoulli, okay, simple enough, you got the likelihood. So, hopefully you get the hang of it. Any other discrete distribution you have, look at the sample, substitute the probabilities, multiply them out, you will get the likelihood, easy enough to. Next is a normal distribution, okay. So, under some normal distribution mu sigma square, here are the sequence of samples I saw 1.07, 0.9, 1.88, 1 1.07, 1.15. These are the samples, 10 samples once again. How will you evaluate the likelihood? You take the first sample and uh, you know the density function, right? So, that is the density function. You evaluate 1.07, uh, plug in x equals 1.07, here you will get the density function evaluated at that point. Now, I mean this is a lot of things to write. I have put dot 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 here. All of these guys will get captured in the dot dot dot. 
right and still the last one and this last guy is this one okay the, the PDF evaluated at uh, 1.08 okay. So now we can multiply all these together and write it in one succinct way okay. The first thing is I notice there is this 1 by root 2 pi sigma occurring in every term. How many terms are there? 10 of them. So I can multiply all of them together. I will get 1 by root 2 pi sigma raised to the power 10. And then I have e power minus e power minus e power minus occurring okay, multiplying 10 times. I can add up all the arguments of the e power minus and write just 1 e power and then you will have 1.07 minus mu squared plus so, so, so on, so on. The whole thing finally divided by 2 sigma squared. Both of these are the same, the same simplification supply. Okay. So notice in both cases, the likelihood became a function of the parameters, right? So the Bernoulli p, so the likelihood was a function of p, uh, normal mu sigma squared. So the likelihood ended up finally being a function of both sigma and mu. Sigma shows up in like multiple places, mu also shows up in so many places. So it is a function of the parameter. So likewise here this parameter shows up here and here. Okay. So likelihood is a function of the unknown parameters. Of course distribution is known, uh, you are assuming that and then writing down the likelihood. Okay. Now remember as the samples change, okay, if the samples change, this function will keep changing also. But, but that is not of great interest to you because you are looking at a particular sample and then evaluating the likelihood and you get a function of the uh, the, of the unknown parameters. Okay, hopefully this is clear. So any other distribution I give you, any other PMF or PDF I give you, you should be able to write down the likelihood. Okay, basic skill in this area. Next, we come to maximizing the likelihood. Maximum likelihood estimator, as the word suggests, uh, we are going to compute the likelihood and try to maximize it. Okay, why would you maximize the likelihood? I mean, it sort of makes intuitive sense, right? You are assuming the samples came from a parameter, from a certain distribution. The parameters are unknown. The parameters could be anything. You calculate the probability that you actually saw the samples and then out of all the parameters, which parameter gave you the maximum likelihood for that particular sample, okay? And then you put that out. So that seems like a very natural uh, way to define an estimator and that is what is the ML estimator. Okay, so you got a particular sampling instance x small x1 through small xn, you compute the likelihood function. Okay, so this is the likelihood, right? Okay. And then you maximize the likelihood over parameters. Okay, so you are maximizing the likelihood over the parameters theta 1 and theta 2. And what is this ARG doing? Okay. So when you maximize the, when you maximize something, there are two possible outputs that can come out of the maximum. Whenever you maximize a function, okay, so there is a function, let us say imagine a function of one variable, okay, a function of one variable, it has some picture like this, you are trying to do a maximum here, right. So there are two outputs, one output is the maximum value, right, the other output is the argument of the maximum, okay, where did the maximum occur? that is called the argument ARG. Next is what is the maximum value, okay. So in this case, I am interested in estimating the parameters. So I really want to know the arg, right. Where did this maximum occur? Which value of the parameters maximize the likelihood of observing this particular sample, okay. Those are my ML estimates, okay. So here is a function of uh, many unknowns. It could be one unknown or it could be multiple unknowns and I have to be able to maximize that function, okay. An important mathematical problem for which you have to use a lot of calculus to precisely solve, okay. So a lot of you will keep asking questions like, you know, why do you study limits, why do you study uh, differentiation, why do you study integration, all of these things. This is where it will help you, okay. Given a function of multiple unknown variables, you know the function, how do you maximize that function? How do you find the point at which it reaches the maximum? It is it's absolutely vital. It is a very important uh, skill to have in mathematics and that is what you are learning in math too, isn't it? So we are going to use that here, okay. When you want to have, uh, to find parameters that are unknown in your distribution, you find the likelihood of that uh, samples and then find those parameters which maximize that likelihood, okay. And we are going to use calculus for finding this maximum, okay. So now when you use calculus, it can happen that your calculus problem is very simple, okay. 
So that is one case, I mean you, you may remember some functions have very simple derivatives, okay, some functions have complicated derivatives and uh, when you, uh, you know, when you work with some functions you can get very easy derivatives and easy answers and you manipulate them, sometimes it will become very, very uh, ugly and you know unwieldy, okay. So a closed form solution is when you can, you know, find the maximum explicitly, you can say for this function the maximum occurs at this value. For instance, quadratic function is a great example, right. Given a quadratic function, you know exactly how easy expression for where it will reach a maximum value, right. So that is a closed form nice solution. But real life it turns out is a little bit more complicated than that. For many distributions, you may not be able to exactly find, you know, nice closed form expressions for where the maximum will occur, okay. So in those cases, you have to rely on a numerical routine. Okay. There are many optimization packages today, you give the function as a computer program, there will be these packages which will find the maximum value of that function, okay. So uh, maybe in your collab exercises I will add some examples of such functions for you. Uh, there are lots of Python packages which will do this for you, okay. So optimization of functions of very different variables is an important uh, problem. It is a very big mathematical area but we do not need to get into that in great length. But for us in this uh, class, we will need to maximize some very simple functions. So I will take those functions, I will go through the maximization. In some cases, we will get very simple answers. In some cases, we will have to do a lot of manipulation. Some of you enjoy such manipulation, some of you get very scared of that manipulation. Let me assure you, we will not expect you to be great wizards in algebraic manipulation in this course. So we will give you simple problems which are uh, easy enough in the activity questions and assignments. Uh, but if the problem becomes a little bit more complicated, you should at least know how to use a computer package and solve it, okay. That is an important skill. So, so on, I mean, uh, so quickly enough, when you go to work or something and when you meet such problems, you should be able to solve it, okay. Even if you cannot do it uh, by algebraic manipulation, you should know how to put it into a program and get the answer. So, usually if you can get a nice closed form expression by algebraic simplification, even a computer program usually will be able to find it, okay. So, so it is good to learn how to set it up as well. Okay. So, this is the uh, brief uh, description of maximum likelihood. It is very elegant and simple to describe. You will see when I see examples, it can become a little bit more complicated than how it sounds. Uh, but uh, you know, pay attention to this high level idea of where the maximum likelihood, how the maximum likelihood decoder is defined and we will jump into examples and problems soon enough. Okay. The first example, always the simplest example that we take is the Bernoulli P distribution, right. So, you have NIID samples that are distributed according to the Bernoulli P distribution. You actually in one sampling instance, you get x1, x2 through xn. Each xi can be 0, zero or 1, okay. What is the likelihood? We saw this before. Likelihood is product of the PMFs. PMF is uh, P if xi is 1, it is 1 minus P if xi is 0. So if W were to denote the number of 1s in the sample, the likelihood is P power W times 1 minus P power n minus W. We also saw this expression. So now the question is, how do you maximize this guy, okay, how do you maximize this over P, okay. So the main idea in maximization is, so if you want to maximize any function, one approach you can take and this is the most popular approach, it is to differentiate and equate to 0, okay. So this is an important approach. Uh, there is lots of theoretical uh, criteria and all of that which uh, assure you as to why this works, when this works, etc. In at, at our level in this course, we will assume that this will generally work, okay. So of course, there are lots of special cases, we, we do not go into that, we will assume generally that this will work, okay. So once again to maximize a function, uh, it, it may be it has one unknown or two unknowns or whatever. So you keep differentiating with respect to each unknown and equate to 0 and try to solve for the unknown, okay. So this is the idea, okay. So in this case, the likelihood is a function of p, p is your unknown, right. And you want to maximize over p, okay. Find the p which gives you the maximum possible likelihood function. So you want to differentiate this L and equate it to 0. Now here is a, another trick, this, this trick, the second trick is very, very important in ML decoding. So instead of maximizing L, you 
is equivalent to it is the same as maximizing log L. Okay, so, note this down this is extremely important. Why is it? Because log is an increasing function and if you if you manage to maximize uh, L you would have also maximized log L because it is it's, it's increasing with uh, it is monotonic it is increasing all the time. So, instead of maximizing L you can also maximize log L. Okay, so, you will get the same answer think about why uh, that has to be true. Okay. So, this will simplify your work tremendously why is that notice what is log L here. Okay. See log of a product is uh, you can write it as sums of the logarithms of the individual terms. So, in this case you will this will end up being w log p plus n minus w log 1 minus p. How nice is this expression looking you will know when you want to differentiate it. Okay. So, I so will call this function as some uh, let us just call it some h of p. Okay. Now, I want to maximize this h of p. So, I will differentiate this h of p with respect to p and equate it to 0. Okay. So, when you differentiate remember w and all is a constant w n minus w and all is a constant right p is the only unknown here I want to maximize it over p. So, I am going to differentiate it with respect to p. So, w remains itself what is the derivative of log p you will get 1 by p okay. plus n minus w remains as such if you look at the derivative you are going to get 1 by 1 minus p times minus 1 there is this function of function rule right log of 1 minus p. So, I do 1 by 1 minus p minus 1 is that okay? Okay. So, so that is it I mean you have got a very simple uh, expression now and this I am going to equate to 0. So, if you simplify this you can multiply throughout by uh, 1 minus p move this to that side if you like right. So, and this is minus 1 right. So, you will get w times 1 minus p equals n minus w times p. Okay. So, this uh, p can come here and this this w p also this w also if you simplify this you will get p equals w by n this is the same as that. So, so, so see how you will simplify it you will get uh, you know uh, w times 1 minus p plus w times p. So, that is w itself equals n p just multiply it out and simplify you will get p equals w by n. Okay. So, it is a it is a simple enough solution. So, what does that mean? So, this function that I took I took log first and then I differentiated it equated it to 0 I got a value of p. So, this value of p is the p that maximizes this l. Okay. Now, it needs a bit of thinking and careful arguing as to why this has to maximize. It turns out according to the theory it can also minimize, but you know in this case it ends up maximizing. Uh, we would not bother so much with such mathematical uh, care and all that. Uh, you can show in this case that this will end up uh, you know uh, maximizing. So, you can show for p less than w by n uh, this quantity will go negative. Uh, will, will be positive I am sorry when p is greater than w by n this quantity will be negative. Okay. So, it increases reaches a maximum and decreases. Okay. So, you can show that. So, this will be uh, the point at which it gets maximum. So, p equals w by n is a nice closed form solution for this problem. Okay. So, this is a nice ex simple example where we got a nice explicit closed form solution you may not get uh, such forms uh, every time, but in this case for the Bernoulli p case we are able to get w by n. So, this w by n is pleasing in so many different ways. Okay. Uh, so, let us let us let's carry on and then describe why this is uh, very pleasing. So, the ML estimation asks for the argument of the maximum of this likelihood function. So, how do you do that? We go ahead differentiate with respect to p and then equate to 0 and solve and we get p star to be w by n. I just showed you how that was done and that is equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus x n divided by n. How did I get this w w y is w equal to x 1 plus x 2 plus so on till x n. You can see this is exactly the number of ones in the sample right because x a is 1 or x a is 0 if you just add everything you will get the number of ones in the sample ok. So, it is easy enough. So, and then how do you go to the estimator p hat m l you replace small x by capital X. Okay, so, here to here you replace 
x i by capital X i. You remember the same thing we did in the uh, you know method of moments also. We solved it with respect to small m i and then you replace small m i with capital M i to get method of moments estimate, right. Same thing you have to do here. You solve it with respect to a particular sampling instance so that everything is number, it is easy for you to deal with and then you simply replace those sample instances with the actual random variables and you will get an estimator. Remember estimator is a random variable, no? I mean it is a function of the sample random variables. So, you should write it like that in a clean fashion, okay. So, so that is your ML estimator, okay. So, you can congratulate yourself, you found your first ML estimator and that is uh, a significant achievement at least in uh, my opinion. Okay. So, that is uh, easy enough and look at how intuitive and nice it is. This is the same as the method of moments estimator, right? Same as uh, MME method of moments estimator, right? What is MME method of moments estimator? Okay. It is also the sample mean, right? So, it makes sense that the maximum likelihood estimator in some sense also agrees with our other intuitions about other estimators, okay. So, uh, let me conclude this lecture at this point. What we are going to do, uh, carry on doing is try and solve this ML decoding problem for many more distributions and see what we get. You will see you will get a wide variety of answers. This answer seemed very simple. We will start with some simple cases and then we will slowly build on it and get more and more complicated cases. You will see a wide array of possibilities are there when you do this maximization. I will pick it up in the next lecture. Thank you.